That's all people that are going to be coming are here. Let me walk you to the Ute Creek Golf Course Maintenance Facility. Yay! Uh, the first thing we want to do is do the roll call. And so we've got a couple people missing. I'm Marshall Allen. Here. Uh, Ann is not here. I'm here. Uh, Paul uh, Mayer. Here. And uh, Phil is not here. And um, so that's it. Uh, the first thing we need to do... Rick. Rick is Rick, here. Rick, 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 Rick. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just sit over here quietly. <laughs> I don't miss you. Oh, I know why. You served out of here. Sorry, Rick. Yeah. No worries. My apologies. No worries. No, there's a car falling in. My eyes are not yeah. right anymore. There's a car. Up. There's a car that just pulled in. Oh, okay. So you better move this. Yes. We will need that chair back. <laughs> changes to the agenda anybody wants to make? Yeah, I I would like to propose that we go through all of our business and then do the, the tour. tour. Yeah, that way the, the recording doesn't have to he doesn't have to stay around if he can't record that. So that works for anybody. So let's move that down to what after uh, items after, from the board? After adjournment. Oh just journey? Okay. Yep. Sure. Uh, any other changes to the agenda would anybody propose? And with that change, is there a motion to accept? I move to accept. Assembly second, please. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Yes. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, the next thing is the uh, minutes. Are there any changes to our last meeting's minutes? If not, do I have a proposal to accept as written? Anyone? I make a motion we accept the minutes as written. Second, anyone? Second. All second. <laughs> motion for me to accept the uh, minutes as written. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all not approved. <laughs> say no. Motion is carried unanimously. Um, is there anybody from the public here? I guess. Nobody from, no, from nobody. nobody from the public is here. Um, okay, so we have the pros. Uh, tell us about since the last meeting. Uh, Keith, can you lead us off? Sure, I'll, uh, I'll lead us off with Twin Peaks and I'll do you Creek as well. Um, Twin Peaks actual revenue for a month of September was $191,498, um, which was just a little bit more than uh, the previous September, so we were happy to go past that number. Uh, for the rounds, played uh, 4,871 to get us to 36,834. And all that is right now, we're all caught up on the rounds, so the comparison should be good, good. as far as that goes. Um, so, yeah, having a good, really good, amazing year. This month is also, I think I checked today, 130,000 at Twin Peaks uh, for the month of October. So which is, I think we did 110 last year, so we're, we're well ahead of last year by 20,000. Um, so in the rounds are over 4,000, so we're up over 40,000 for the year at Twin Peaks. Um, and if you would have told me that at the beginning of the year with all that Ryan and I have been through this year with the uh, irrigation project and being under construction and 
even just the veil of being under construction, um, for us to be that busy is remarkable. So it's been a great year. So, okay, U Creek, month of September, their actual revenue was $269,416, um, which appears to be $20,000 ahead of the previous September. And the rounds played 5,467 rounds. Those projections are pretty close there. And the actual rounds for the year are 40,464. I ran those numbers today, and I think that New Creek was at 135 as of middle of the day today, with another 38, 3,900 rounds for the month of October. So, um, what, a, what a year. I mean, yeah. well up over 2.1 for the year through September. So, it's, it's amazing. Really going well. Just busy. You, when, when the weather is nice, we are busy. Thank you, Brian. All right, sunset uh, here for September. Our actual uh, revenue came at eighty-four thousand sixty-one, uh, about sixteen thousand ahead of uh, previous September. And rounds, actual rounds came in at uh, forty-two thirty-seven. Um, pretty close to the projection there as well. Uh, down a little bit from the previous year in rounds. Um, not that much though, but again, yes, it's been absolutely busy. Um, October, I think you and I met on Friday, we were a little behind in revenue from last year for October, but we went ahead in rounds. Um, and then overall, it's just, yeah, busiest. I, I have to agree, it's one of the busiest years we've ever had, and it's just not, well, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> or the next day, but we'll kind of slow down a little bit. Yeah, right. It's not showing that right now. So. All right, thank you. Uh, any old business? I don't think there's any got. No old business. Uh, new business. Um, any new business? I would End like the to, season. Yep. I could kind of give a summary and share some news with you all. So, yeah, play, I'll start there. It's just been incredible. And I think this is the third year in a row now that each year we say it can't get any better than it has been and it has. And revenue, I think, is at least a half a million ahead of last year. <coughs> Ultimately, pretty crazy. And just keep wondering when that uh, bubble's <laughs> going to hit after you know, the COVID bubble is, just seems to be carrying through. So that's been very good. Um, and, and then the next thing is, as you can see, we're setting in the maintenance facility, you know, five and a half years after it was uh, passed in the bond election. Uh, uh, it's been nice to have Dan and his crew operating out of here, and I think uh, when, when we do the tour, you'll all be pretty impressed with uh, what we ended up with. Uh, Twin Peaks the irrigation project. They are scheduled to start showing up this week to start the work on the back nine. The full crew, I believe, is scheduled to be here next week. And they still have a goal of getting all the pipe in the ground by the end of the year. Of course, we won't be in a place to grow grass, but uh, that will hopefully be able to get us uh, early spring where they can come back and get all the, the seed that needs to be in the ground and ready to go for um, spring and then hopefully by early summer uh, we've signed off with them and they're off to other things and we have a course that we can water much more efficiently than we've ever been able to do. Um, a couple other things that, that we did do this year, uh, we placed furnaces in multiple facilities and uh, replace some dining room equipment. And that list of other things is pretty pretty small. And that was intentional because as we were moving forward through the, the two big projects, we were really worried about what was gonna come up and then were we gonna have enough money to, to finish them. So uh, I, I think we're, we're actually in a pretty good place that probably by the end of the year, we should close out here at uh, at U Creek, and that should free up uh, 
probably over $300,000 for the golf fund. Which really leads to the next things is here at U Creek we have three pretty substantial things that we need to address and they have to be by far number one uh, priorities. The first one is the deck at, uh, at the clubhouse. If anybody has spent any time up there recently, you notice how soft the, the plywood has gotten and we were worried that some folks were going to step through that. Dan and his crew have started to do some removal of the plywood to see what we have underneath there. And then uh, we also have a design to do the entire deck, but uh, again, with as bad as it was getting at that north end, we wanted to do some test uh, samples of some project or product that we want to put on there that uh, they indicate could have a, a life of 20 years and will keep water from going through and causing some of the problems that we have. Uh, the second thing is we need to do some work to the silo out here. Um, that was identified a, a couple of years ago, but we decided to not do any of that work until the, the maintenance project was done. Uh, we are done and we have a, a quote that that's probably going to cost about $100,000 to fix some foundation, do some uh, repairs to some of the block, and then seal it. And um, we want to make sure that that is here for uh, ever. It is designated as a historic landmark, and we need to make sure that uh, we protect that. And then the final thing is uh, a uh, connectivity trail that uh, we are going to be required to install. That will go from the west side of our property over here to the east side uh, over here and it connects trails that are already there and we think that could cost as much as $350,000 to do that on the high end um, because we also have to do a bridge at the, over the ditch over here at the west end. So we're designating that amount of money uh, here after the first year we'll, we'll hire a design firm and, and get that uh, moving for this year. And then the, the only other thing I'll just mention is that we're, we're going to also probably do some design work for patio improvements at sunset uh, that uh, hopefully we can uh, make some things better than they are right now. And uh, I won't commit that we'll have that done by the end of next year, but it will be uh, early 26 at the latest that we I think we can start doing that. And again, that's all based on, on, on the funding that, uh, you know, I don't think I've mentioned, but the first quote that we had on the deck here at U Creek was between three hundred sixty-five and $405,000 to fix it. We think since then we have a new product that's going to lower that by probably at least $100,000. So, and by the same company uh, and actually will end up being better than uh, what what we think we were going to go to, to start with. But, um, Dan is working on on uh, working with purchasing to get bids out to uh, do that whole project because that that is our, our priority. The next thing, in, and I say this and I'm sad to announce this, is that Sam has announced that he's going to retire. He will be done uh, as of January 31st of next year. And so we as a staff and as pros are working to see how to uh, move forward. Um, I'm having conversations with Keith and, and Ryan to see if uh, either of them are interested in, in relocating to U Creek. Um, Keith is interested in doing that and so we will be um, looking into how to move forward with that and making sure we go through all of the city process for that. With that, uh, Ryan has indicated that he's in, interested to not only continue to operate Sunset, but would like to be considered to run Twin Peaks as well. Oh, is that gross? So, uh, he, uh, he's a glutton for punishment. Oh, wow. And, uh, 
Um, Keith has been gracious enough to uh, help, uh, will be willing to help Brian to, through that. Uh, again, that's kind of where we're at right now. We need to make sure that we go through um, proper channels with purchasing, but uh, I think ultimately we'll be able to do that. And probably is, that is what's best for golf at, at this point in time. Um, one of the, I, I missed one thing that I wanted to talk about, but with, with golf, you know, I don't generally hear very much from, uh, people that are golfing except for two, two things. And one set of them aren't, aren't even golfers, but the first one is pace of play. Pace of play is an issue. Uh, at different times at all three of our courses. And, it, you know, it, it's a really a challenge to help with pace of play because you have two groups. One is holding the other group up. And by helping one, you're upsetting the other one and, and vice versa. And probably causes some of the most grief and heartache for our, our rangers to try to work through that. But... Uh, does anyone have any suggestions of, of pace of play, your experiences, or how you feel if you're the group holding somebody back, or if you're being held back? Uh, how how you suggest uh, we maybe could do better with that? Anyone? Well, my experience, since I've played with a lot of different people, both on you know, Sunset and Twin Peaks. Sunset has the reputation of if you're beginning to play golf, we should go play nine holes, so we're going to go play Sunset. So Sunset, I think, ends up with more new golfers, for sure. And, and of course, what makes it worse is Sunset's the hardest course, or well, hardest nine holes, because it's narrow and there's you know, small dreams, etc. Uh, the people I've played with at Sunset, they've come from all over around around us, don't seem to be upset about it. Most of them expect that at Sunset there's going to be slow play, just because of the nature of, of, the, of the course. They think, well, it's only nine holes, so therefore we're going to have golfers that are new or just starting to play golf, etc. Uh, at Twin Peaks, it, for me, it's been more of an issue, and I think it's just the opposite. Twin Peaks is an 18-hole golf course, therefore golfers should know how to play, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, because of COVID, we have a lot of new golfers. And, and so some of them, you know, have been taught uh, the, uh, how to play the play course, et cetera. And others are still sort of new to it or haven't been taught certain things. And, and uh, I don't know what you can do. Because I, listen, I've experienced so much on both those courses. I don't play youth very much. But um, I think in only one time did I, was somebody really upset to the point where they want to get hold of the marshal and to tell the group up to, you know, to go. A couple of times I've seen on U Creek, I mean on Sunset, which surprised me, there's been five golfers uh, in a group. Now I don't know if that's if they, one was going to substitute for another or what, but I have been behind five golfers at, at Sunset multiple times over the years. Um, so I don't know if that's an issue or not. But uh, I wish I could. Having talked all of this, I wish I could have had some kind of solution. Can he play he does nine at uh, Twin Peaks? Sure. Yeah. Maybe that's uh, promote more nine. You can't promote nine or nine. Well, it's not, it's not so much we can't promote it. It's better if we don't. Better. Revenue-wise. Okay. Because we, you get a bunch of nine. We get a lot of nine-hole play off the back nine early in the morning. Ryan's great about letting us get a lot of nine-hole play off. He does... It's, it's whatever work that needs to be done, and we get that, that nine holes open to early morning golfers for an hour, hour and a half. But if you promote too much of that, then you, you turn it into a nine hole course, and then 
you know, the revenue for nine holes in a cart versus the revenue for 18 holes in a cart is about $23 difference. So I can kind of, with what you talked about with Sunset and that as well, having Marshall there for three, four years under Keith. Um, continuing on, yes, part of the problem is, is that everybody thinks it's the beginning of this course. The second thing is, it's a shorter course. So if you've got more experienced, bigger hitters, they've got to wait all the time because you've got to wait till somebody's on the green because if you don't, you're hitting into them, especially like that hole two, hole three, hole five, I mean, part three, obviously, hole six, depending where you're at, seven coming down again, eight usually don't have a problem. So half the time you're waiting for them to be almost on the green in order to tee off. So that's one of the problems with Sunset also. Um, one way around it maybe is posting signs, and it's not going to stop it, is saying that you may be asked to move up or some verbiage of if you're falling behind, marshals may ask you to pick up and move up or whatever. I mean, I don't know the exact verbiage to use, but somehow to move forward so that the groups can continue to go because usually it's one group somewhere that's holding them up. And again, I also know having marshaled that you can tell people that and the marshal's going to get told a few things in multiple languages, multiple words, as to what they could go do and how fast they can get there. Um, so it's, there's a happy medium there and I don't know, and this doesn't, isn't just to the Longmont courses, this is at every golf course I've ever played that you've run into. Yeah. That you've got fast and go and, and and again, it depends. If you have a foursome and you got a threesome behind them, the threesome's always going to say the foursome's holding us up. Yes, that's true, because there's one less player. Um, so there's, there's, it's a tough thing to say how to speed up play and to be fair and to everybody, because if a foursome's going, well, we're playing on pace at two hours for nine, why do you think we need to speed up? I can't argue with that. If they've got a threesome or a twosome behind them, now, if that threesome or twosome asks, hey, can we go ahead, and they don't, then that's, you know, a different issue. But. Yeah. Um, one other thing, my, my wife and I uh, go to Vegas four or five times a year. We play multiple golf courses there. It's no different. <coughs> I don't see any difference between playing golf in Las Vegas and playing golf here, to be honest with you. And, and so I don't, you know, we, we, everybody always complains about the, the good golfers, you know, and they're in a hurry, they, they always they want, want it to move fast. But I, I see no difference. And I, I've played a lot of golf in Vegas, believe me. Can, can you, you know, could you do some, different courses? Could you do something like, you know, how the fire has, has the, the thing about how, uh, so we're right now in a high demand uh, period that mm -hmm. sort of, Dial on the outside, and secondly, could the could the uh, uh, slow pace, uh, slow the, place, uh -huh. the slow pace signage? Yeah, the kind uh, of moderate. Kind of, yeah, it's uh, like a little there. on the slow and end. Your, it's slow today. Could your folks out there uh, be uh, the <laughs> rangers uh, say, uh, you know, when they do get nasty with them, have some sort of small little token thing to say, hey, we know this is a pain. We know that you paid. We know that you did this. Can we give you something to, to understand that we really understand, appreciate your willingness to be flexible about doing that? Maybe it's a, a, a beer at the at the tap afterwards, or a soda, or some sort of thing like that. Just to kind of get them to understand that you're trying to be flexible. You know they're making a uh, they're being a good guy by moving ahead or uh, letting somebody. You know you don't do it all the time, but maybe it's someone who's really getting agitated, bring down a little bit. I don't know. So, I think I have done that in the past. Um, not maybe the free, you know, yeah. a beer or something. But you know, usually on busy days, I know my staff, especially on Sundays, um, Mike who works the afternoons, he he always at least tries to tell everyone, hey, it's Sunday afternoon. Yeah. It is slow. <laughs> Expect it to be. It's not going to be a two-hour round of golf. Mm -hmm. so, 
and I had to I had to tell that to a guy the other day, uh, maybe a month ago now. And literally walked in right after. Um, I think it was a senior center. It just it was before the last event for the senior center, and they were all out there. And he's like, "Oh, it doesn't look that busy. I think I can get out or get around in an hour and a half with a golf cart today." <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, maybe, mm -hmm. but uh, no, it's not. It's not going to be an hour and a half. It'll probably be two to two fifteen. Each of the golf courses are rated by the USGA. Um, we all have our pace of play rating as well." I believe I'm at 215 at the moment is our average pace of play. I can't speak for twin and or for youth, but I know that's about what my average is on the weekends. Definitely probably closer to that two and a half, depending on the time of day. Because on the weekends, you're going to get all skill levels. So like, like you guys are saying, COVID brought in so many new golfers. And it's, it's, it's about us trying to educate them to the best of our ability. And, uh, and our marshals trying to just educate them and not get the the, uh, uh, the, the negative side too often, you know. But it, it it does happen, and we just we do our best to, to make make what we can of it and try to keep them happy. So, so Jeff, to, to your point, you after you ask, does anybody have any ideas? So, and and. This, this whole, you know, 10 days ago, two weeks ago, when Sam mentioned to me he was leaving, um, of course, my wheels began to turn. I began to think about New Creek and began to think about all the golf board meetings and what's talked about at the golf board meetings and uh, relative to New Creek over the years and the Twin Peaks as well. Is, is it still a play? So, one of the things that, you know, lying awake, you know, night time, <laughs> next steps. Uh, one of the things that, that came to me was that. If people know it's going to be slow, and everybody's keeping pace with the group in front of them, then nobody's upset. It's, it's when we have the situation, especially at Twin Peaks, because at Twin Peaks, because it's one big rectangle, everybody can see everybody else. So if you're on five green, you can look over and see seven green, and you can see nobody's on six. And you can see now that this group is a hole and a half behind. That's usually when we get a phone call, by the way. And out goes the marshal. And, but I think it needs to happen before that. And I think what, as I thought about this, signage in the pro shop um, to educate the golfers. For everyone to have a good day today, you have one job. And that's not to worry about the group behind you. It's to worry about the group in front of you. You keep pace with the group in front of you. You should be waiting just a little bit all day. Okay, and then when I'm out there giving lessons to people, just yesterday, I'm pointing at number nine. You see, we got a group on the tee, group in the fairway, group walking off the green. Because this woman was a beginner. She's very nervous about going out and playing. What am I going to do? I don't want to hold anybody up. I said, who you hold up isn't your problem. Your job is to worry about keeping up with the group in front of you. Nobody's going to honk at you if you're keeping up with the group in front of you. And I told her, I said, I know you drive in the right lane in your car all the way to Boulder every week. She goes, yes, I do. <laughs> and I said, and I know you keep up with the car in front of you, right? She goes, yes. And I said, you don't want to be in that left lane, do you? She goes, no. But you're okay in the right lane as long as you're keeping up. Same thing on the golf course. If we can put signage up and, and have a campaign, so to speak, to educate the golfers. Yeah, the first tee would be also another good first, place to First tee is a good place to have it. And that way we get, we, get, we get it in everyone's minds before they start. Your job is to keep up with the group in front of you. How you do that, we don't even care. If that means you kick your ball down the fairway, we're great with that. If you pick it up and carry it to the next hole, that's fine too. But what you can't do is fall two holes behind because it's really hard to catch up. If you're that bad to begin with, it's really hard to catch up two holes. And so I like whoever said it a few minutes ago, if you're behind... We're going to move you in place. So if they know that in the beginning, your job is to keep up with the group in front of you. If the marshal has to come tell you to catch up, it, it, won't, it won't be a request. I mean, we're not nicely. We want you to catch up. So if that means you got to pick your ball up and just get in your cart and drive to catch up, great. That's it. And that's kind of where if we, I don't know if authority is the word, but if we have the, the latitude to be able to do that and talk to people in a way that, 
You knew this was going to happen. Now it's happening, so now you have to catch up. Because it, it, I'll be out there Sunday afternoon giving lessons, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and I'm watching the groups come through, and I'm looking for gaps. So this time of year, you know, here we are, 8.30 start time, so I'm expecting to see groups coming in at 12.30. So if at 11.45 I look over at 15 Green and I don't see anybody, I'm on the phone calling the marshal, saying, okay, get out to 15, let's get these people moving. And it's effective and it does work, but it's, it's constant and you have to be watching it. And all it takes is one group. I, I sat there this summer and watched, and, and there was one specific group, it happened three different times. One specific group on a Sunday, two couples playing a scramble, by the way. <laughs> two couples playing a scramble, sharing a cart, husbands and wives, having a ball. I mean, literally having a ball. Um, and they finished two holes behind the group in front of them. They might have been having too much of the ball. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that held it up for everybody else. And then as soon as they got off, you just kept seeing one group after another finish. But it was that one group that was holding everybody up. They, they finished with two holes in front of them. All. So I think trying to educate people before they start. I agree with you. And, 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 and not even... The pace of play cards are nice, but I think more end up in the trash than end up in, in front of people reading them. Um, just right there at the front counter, it gets started. Right there when the marshal talks to them, first team reader situation, whatever it is. <clears throat> when they get out to the first fold, they know they have one job. And if we can enforce that somehow, I think that changes the speed of play. And, and then, on, you know, and I like what you said, on, on the weekends, if you expect to come out and play fast on the weekend, it's like, it's like me driving from Erie here today with County Road 1 closed, okay, and expecting to write down there by Walmart, it's closed, expecting to get here quick as I detoured around back by Costco, turned right up the pace, now I'm in traffic everywhere. There's not going to be a quick way to get here at 6 o'clock in the evening. So, moral of that story, it's like you trying to make a left on this road here. Yeah. <laughs> um, back to back traffic. So if we, can, if we can educate people, I think that'll help. And I mean really educate them. Where when they check in, that's part of the check-in process. I was going to say, that's where I think it needs to be a signage as well as a conversation at the check-in, at the, the courses, and then another sign at the first tee. Multiple signs. Yes. That, and then another one at the turn for those that have 18. That, yeah. hey, make sure that you're staying with the group. Ahead. Not to say... Your play needs to be done in this amount of time. Which not, I mean, we have the clock at you on the fourth hole or yeah. fourth hole. T. Think of it. I think all of the courses are at the fifth hole. Fifth, fifth hole. It We're, says you know you should be done at one hour. Rather than yeah. saying it that yeah. way, you say yeah. your job is to stay up with yeah. the group ahead of you. The only that's a better. That. That's the better way to say it versus the time because maybe you're through there in 45 minutes. You go, well, I'm ahead now. I can slack them off. No. Well, that's not what it's doing. No. Keep up with the group. Or your expectation. And, and I think if they, if they see that sign, if they see the signage four, five, six times a day, right? Four, five, six. You guys ever seen the movie Focus with Will Smith? Where they, where they planted the seed, the late in the girl's head, mm -hmm. and, and then it came time for a bet, and she'd seen this thing enough times, and something about the guy, a football player on the field, and what he was going to do, and, and, and the guy says, pick him up. And she picked the number, and she got it right. And, and the guy won the bet. But they had planted the seat from the moment she got out of the hotel room that when she looked down there, she was going to pick that number. If we if we keep bombarding them with it, it becomes something that it's just there. It's just there. It's just there. You just seen seven times or whatever. Yeah. Would there be any value in putting the sign in the carts? Oh, yeah, absolutely. 100%. To me, if, it, if it's right in front of you, it, and it needs to be simple. Right. I just put something simple. As Are you keeping up with the group in front of you? Question mark. Avoid a visit from the marshal. Yeah. Keep up with the group in front yeah, of you. Yeah, all of it. Whatever you have to say. Because yeah. if everybody. I think if they know yeah. that they may get a visit from the marshal, that makes it easier for the marshal, too. Yeah, that's true. And you're liable to avoid some of those yeah. contentious situations. Although, like Bill said, some of those guys will do it. They'll play slow on purpose just to get that visit so they can be contentious. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> that does happen. Because they've got a few more beers in them. 
Uh, Rick or Marshall, do you have anything to add, Paul? A whole bunch of operational theory things went through my head. None of them apply here because we want to keep the same time frames. I think well, maybe we just spread out our times. That affects revenue. Can't do it. I understand. So, no, I like the idea of signage reminding people keep up with the group in front of you. And that, that might put a little anxiety on you. You hit a ball and you're kind of lost it and you're like, crap. You know, I got my three minutes here. Well, I'm going to go five. No, I better keep up with the people in front of me. Yeah, so that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so that, that predisposition to keep up is a really enforceable and reasonable thing to present to the public, I think. Um, I agree. Any more from the staff? I have just two, two more things. So one's another question. So as we start moving into 2025, um, I'm going to combine these two comments. Um, Paul, Rick, and Philip are not going to be on the board again. They have chose to not reapply. And so I wanted to make sure um, you all had a, the opportunity to comment about anything you've seen on the golf course that you would like to suggest that we consider as projects in the future or things that, that other other policies you'd like to to I'm sorry, just nets came to mind along <laughs> three on sunset, but no, <laughs> or maybe even on third. So no. I do not That's just no. uh, yeah. I think that's an astronomical number. Yes it is. I know. I, and I, I think know. it's a it's a lot of work with all those neighbors to oh, yes. to Looking right out to the green. It's not so much the green, though, as much as along the street. And I know that it would eliminate a lot of potential golf balls from the industry, mm -hmm. but it also means that people don't care as much and they don't care if they slice it a lot more. It, you get a double edged sword. They're going to try to, to go over the net yes. or whatever. In fairness, like there's, nice, there's a nice row of trees there. But yeah. It's like if you're at Top Golf and you're on the third deck. You've got guys that are trying to hit it over the net on purpose. You know, I'm not saying that they're going to do it on the golf course, but, but you're not saying that I'm not saying that. Okay. I know a guy. I know a guy. It is bad through my I know he can get high enough to get it over the net. I, don't know, I think the biggest thing we experienced, at least from my perspective as a player, raccoons this year. I've never seen such raccoon damage. Huh. That we've had across Sunset this year, I think it's the Beatles, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, Ryan and Danny. They uh, they they did their best to get stuff down right. as quickly as possible. Right. Um, I can't speak entirely to that, but I think they did get most of it, and now it's just the second round in a sense. So for the Beatles, for the Beatles, right? And, and right. Grubs. The Beatles, it's the Beatles Grubs. Bad. Yeah. yeah. But, the Beatles uh, were bad at one point, I'll tell you, but uh, they went away pretty quick once they got all the product down. So, Some of the groundskeepers were saying raccoons. Uh, oh, yeah, no. It, it, so it's, it's well, what the raccoons were eating the grubs. grubs. Oh, so, is that what they, they, so they, they were, were eating? Grubs. The grubs, the grubs were, okay. were like the, the eggs in a sense, right, and right, they were right. digging them out, eating gotcha. those. Gotcha. And then the, all the, the, they started to hatch into the beetles. Gotcha. So then. They sprayed everything. It wiped out most of that at the most part, and then the, the raccoons went away. And then they eventually yeah. come back. Gotcha. Okay. You know, over time, but it's it's something that I know Ryan uh, was was is still working on. That's a second, right? Ish. Get ready for progress. <laughs> <laughs> Winter's coming. <laughs> uh, Paul, do you have anything you want to share? No, I mean I'm playing a lot less as I've gotten a lot older. So I don't have any uh, comments about the course. I, I just like to say, based on my term on the board, that I think Jeff and the, the three pros and the staffs, you know, the numbers tell the story. Obviously, you're doing an awful lot of things right. So I just say keep it up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Can I say something? I want to thank all of you for your service and everything. I, I'm a high school civics teacher and I'm actually showing my students a, uh, a documentary about service, what you all do. Uh, it's called, it's on Netflix, called uh, 
join or dive. And we need folks to be uh, joining things like boards and commissions and stuff like that to get on here because it's actually degraded the fabric of our society. Uh, and people are siloed in their political beliefs and other things like that, and they don't have these things that bring people together and have these experiences. So anybody you can recommend to be on the boards is just absolutely critical to our success here and our success as a, as a community, even overall, because it uh, brings people together in walks of life and experiences, and that's uh, probably the most critical thing that we can be working on right now. So if you've got people that you know that should be, um, uh, you really say, hey, you're a great golfer, and we really <coughs> want you, to, do it. We want you to, uh, to try to help us recruit them because it's critical to have, uh, you know, we had two or three people not here tonight, and it's, it's so important to make sure that uh, we have that uh, uh, this board filled because if you know how much good it does to, to bring people together, especially when we are in a situation where we are uh, 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 having an uptick in all the uh, uh, use of the courses. We need input, we need your thoughts, and we need people just like you to, to uh, step up and, and help us out. So thank you again. Hello? No, I mean, it, it's been fun to be here and, and hear all the different things. And uh, this goes back 20-some years ago when I started working for Keith at Sunset for the four years, marshalling on every Sunday uh, at Sunset. Uh, and seeing how things have progressed and how things have changed. Um, but, uh, you yeah, know, it, it's... It's, it's a tough industry, obviously. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, as courses keep getting developed, I mean, you've got, granted, it's a semi-private course where you've got uh, TPC up in Bertha and, and that. So you've got some of your higher-end courses at that where people will go to, and it's a different clientele, and that's part of what it is. You can go to a number for a day and spend the $150 or whatever it is around for that. Uh, versus uh, people who come to the municipal courses, and I know George and Mark who play every Sunday almost religiously at Twin Peaks and have find their time, whatever that they do. Um, and that's the, the difference that you get people that are comfortable in different settings. And uh, there's a variety of, of golfers out there. You know, is it the guy who's looking to go play at 60 courses in the state of Colorado this year? Versus the guy who says, I can go play my course and I'm comfortable playing it every week because I know the guys out there. And I know what to expect. I know where the hazards are. I know where to put, put the ball. There's a, there's a different perspective for different people. And it's tough to cater to everybody because you're going to get the guy who's trying to play 60 courses and you're going to get the guy who's playing there 52 weeks a year. And... They're on the same course, and you got to cater to both of them. So th it's a tough thing for the pros and the city to manage that. Um, it's not an easy task. And uh, obviously, some would have managed to do it well enough that with the growth in, in revenue and rounds, it's not, it's not just a revenue growth because the prices went up. The rounds have also gone up, so it's, it's a combination. It's not just a... We jacked the price up twenty dollars around, so we made more money. Uh, John and Marshall, we, we have two candidates for the board that we will need to do interviews. We'll do those virtually. Will you both help with that? Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. With Danny and I will be in touch to get those scheduled. Okay. That's that's all I have. Okay. That's all we hear from the staff. Anybody else want to speak from the board? Any issues, comments, concerns? Here's your chance. <laughs> okay, nothing from the board. Uh, then, uh, does anybody have anything else to say? I move for adjournment. Uh, it's been a motion made to move for adjournment. Any seconds? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Let's go on tour! <laughs> <laughs>